So which compound is butane? So but means four carbon. So the value of N is equals to four and N means it's an alkane. So the general formula is CN H2N plus two. So the number of the carbon should be four and the number of hydrogen, it will be twice of four plus two, which is eight, 10. So which is C4 and H10, that is a butane. So when we count, these two B and C cannot be because there's a double bond, it's an alkene. This one is having a bromine, so it's not a hydrocarbon. Butane is a hydrocarbon, so we're left with only option A, which is C4 and H10. Two compounds which are structural isomers, to be an isomer, they should have the same molecular formula but different structures. So as you can see, this one is butene and the, the first one, the C is butene because the position of a double bond is the second and third, where the position of the carbon bond is the first and second carbon. So B and C are the structural isomers. Which compound can be made by reaction of alkene with bromine? So when alkene reacts with bromine, the double bond will break and as a result, it will form an addition reaction. Additional reaction product will be there, which will be uh, dibromo alkane. So which one is di? These two are dibromo alkane, but E cannot be formed by addition of alkene because the two carbon which are having a double bond, both bromine, like bromine atoms should be added to the two carbon which are having a double bond. Here, so bromine is added to the first carbon, then the next bromine should add to the second carbon, not the third carbon. So that's why this cannot be formed by addition reaction. So D can be formed by addition reaction of alkene with bromine. Which compound has a, is a saturated hydrocarbon means contain a carbon-carbon single bond and it should be a hydrocarbon. So again, A should be the right answer. Then which compound is empirical formula C to H5? So when we take a simplest ratio, so hydrocarbon only A, B, C are hydrocarbons, D and E are not hydrocarbons. So this one is C4, H10, this one is C4, H8 and C4, H8. Alkene, when we take a empirical formula CH2, empirical formula CH2, here empirical formula C to H5. So C2H5 is a radical formula. So that's why, again, compound A. Name the two products made by complete combustion of C. So when we burn a hydrocarbon, what it produce? It will produce carbon dioxide plus water will be there as one of the products. Then petroleum can be separated into a useful substances using the apparatus shown. Name a fraction which is a more viscous. So viscosity increases as we go down in this fractionating column become more viscous or thing. So lubricating fraction or you can say bitumen. Then name a fraction with the smallest molecule. The smallest molecules, refinery gas will have the smallest molecule because the number of the carbon is increases as we go down in this, so it decreases as we go up. So refinery gas. will have the smallest molecule. Name a fraction which has a weakest attractive force, so that also refinery gas will be there. Name the fraction X is a, used as a jet fuel, so it is paraffin or kerosene. And what happened at point Y on the diagram? So what basically happened at point Y? We vaporize or heat the crude oil. Or vaporize or boil. You can also mention these terms. In question two, silver dichromate is a red insoluble salt. Silver dichromate can be made by reacting a silver nitrate with ammonium dichromate. The chemical equation is there. Describe how uh, you could obtain a pure dry solid of a silver dichromate after mixing silver nitrate and ammonium dichromate. So this is called ionic precipitation. We are mixing the two salt solution. As a result, what will happen? It will produce a solid. And that solid is known as precipitate. So how we can obtain the precipitate? 
So to obtain this precipitate, what we can do, we can first um, carry out a filtration. So describe how we want to obtain a dry silver dichromate. So this one is silver dichromate. So what we will do, we will, and it's of three marks. So first what we do, we mix the two solutions. We will filter. And then we can wash this to remove any trace of uh, soluble impurities. So we can filter first and then wash the residue, which is a silver dichromate, and then we will dry the crystals. The charge on a silver is plus one. Deduce the charge on a dichromate. So how we can deduce the charge? Like this is a dichromate ion. So Cr2O7 is a dichromate ion and silver. So the formula is written to Ag2Cr2O7. So what the valency is because these valencies are cross multiplied. So this two is the charge of a dichromate ion and because nothing is written means one is the charge of a silver ion. If the silver is plus one, what is the charge of a dichromate? It is minus two because the valency is cross multiplied to give a chemical formula. Then write ionic equation for formation of a silver dichromate. So how silver dichromate is formed? The solid Ag Cr2O7. So it contains a silver ion. How many silver ions? Two. And it contains one dichromate ion. What is the charge? Minus two. So silver ion cutting combined with the dichromate ion as a result produce silver dichromate. Dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to ammonium nitrate. So whenever ammonium salts are there and we add sodium hydroxide so on heating, it gives a pungent gas, which is ammonia, turn the damp red litmus blue. So the mixture was born. State and explain what happened to universal indicator. So what will happen to universal indicator paper? It will turn blue. And the reason is gives of ammonia. Because the ammonia is released, which convert universal indicator. Ammonia is an alkaline gas. The apparatus shown was set up. We have silver nitrate and ammonium dichromate. Explain why a red solid appear along a line marked S. So this is related to rate of diffusion. Silver nitrate is lighter, so it will move faster. Ammonium dichromate is heavier, so its particle moves slower. That's why the reaction occur near ammonium dichromate. So ammonium dichromate is heavy. So its particles move slower or diffuse slower. And opposite will happen, silver nitrate, when we work out, it is lighter, so its particle move faster. So that's why they meet near, or they react near silver dichromate, or ammonium dichromate. If uh, the experiment was repeated at a higher, what will be the effect? So the solid will appear because higher temperature particle will move faster. So the reaction occur in a short time. So solid form will form quickly. Because the particles move faster.
Then ammonium dichromate undergo a thermal decomposition. The product uh, is chromium three oxide, nitrogen, and water. So we have what is meant by a thermal decomposition. The term thermal decomposition means break down the substance by the help of heat. So breaking down of a substance is known as thermal decomposition. So ammonium dichromate formula is given. We have to write a balance equation. So ammonium dichromate Cr2O7 gives chromium 3. So what will be the Chromium valency is plus 3 and oxygen is minus 2 because it's group 6. So the formula for chromium 3 oxide will be Cr2O3. Plus nitrogen. Nitrogen is a non-metal, so it exists as a diatomic molecule and water is there, H2O. So one mark is for always writing a correct products. The second mark is for the balance equation. So we have... Chromium is already balanced, nitrogen is balanced, only hydrogen we have to balance. So 4 multiply by 2, 8. So if I put 4, hydrogen is also balanced. So this equation is correct in terms of product and balance in terms of all the reagents. Nitrile chloride NO2Cl react with a nitric oxide, the forward reaction is exothermic. So if the forward reaction is exothermic, reactants have high energy and the product is having low energy. What is meant by the term equilibrium for a reversible reaction? So rate of forward equals rate of backward and there is no change in concentration of reactant or product. But remember, don't say that amount of reactant equal to amount of product. If you mention amount of reactant equal to product, means that is wrong. Their amounts are not same, but the speed at which the reaction occur, that is same, so the concentration does not change. Why increasing a temperature increases the rate of reaction? So when we increase the temperature, so increase in temperature, the particle will move faster. The particles move faster. More collagens and greater number of the particles having energy more than activation energy. So as a result, the rate of the reaction will also increase. State and explain the effect of any on increasing a temperature and position of equilibrium. So because the forward reaction is exothermic, so when we have exothermic reactions, the reactants have high energy and the product is having low energy. So if we increase the temperature where the equilibrium will shift, it will shift towards the left-hand side. So we have reactant and product. When we increase the temperature, most of the product absorb, particle absorb energy and form back the reactant. So equilibrium will shift towards the left-hand side. And the reason is the forward is exo, so the backward is endo. Sit and explain decreasing a pressure. If we decrease the pressure, if we increase pressure, equilibrium shift towards side where number of moles of gas are less. If we decrease the pressure, equilibrium will shift towards side where number of moles of gas are more. And if the number of the moles of gas are same, then there's no effect of the pressure. So as you can see, uh, one, one, so two moles of the gas in the reactant and two moles of the gas in the product. So there's no change in there's no effect of pressure on the equilibrium. So no effect. And the reason is that because equal moles, equal number of moles for reactant and product of gas. It's only valid for gases. If you have a gaseous reactant or maybe one side we have gaseous reactant and other side no, so we'll consider other side as 
zero. So complete the equation. A double bond is there. Dot and cross diagram. Oxygen belongs to group six, so it share two. So nitrogen will share two. And here single bond, so nitrogen share one, chlorine will share one. So unshared will be six on chlorine as it belongs to group seven. Unshared four on oxygen, it belongs to group six, and unshared uh, two on nitrogen as it belongs to group five. The nitrosyl chloride has a boiling point of minus six. Explain why it has a low boiling point because uh, weak intermolecular forces are. It's a simple covalent structure, so it is having a weak intermolecular forces. So simple covalent compound. So there is a weak intermolecular. Forces. If it was a giant covalent structure, it will have a strong intermolecular or force between the particles or the molecules. Then question four is related to electrolysis of a copper two sulfate solution. Draw an arrow on the diagram. Show the direction of movement of electron. So electron always move out from the negative and into positive. And draw an arrow to show the movement of the uh, positive ions. The so copper ions. Positive ions are always attracted towards cathode, so this will be the movement of copper ions. Then oxygen was formed at anode and copper at cathode. Why oxygen? This changes oxidation. Whenever you are writing oxidation or reduction, write in terms of the definition in terms of electron because it is a loss of electron. That's why we call that change as Oxidation. Write ionic equation for formation of copper ion. So when copper ions from the electrolyte move towards anode or towards cathode, gain two electrons and form a copper metal. The electrolysis was repeated using copper electrode. State and explain what happened to masses of anode and cathode. So we are using copper electrodes. Anode and cathode are made up of copper, and electrolyte is an aqueous copper too. Sulfate. So there is a copper ion, sulfate ion, hydrogen ion, and hydroxide ion. So copper ions attracted towards cathode. As a result, amount of the copper ion start to decrease. So copper atom will go inside the solution as a copper ions to balance that change in concentration. So size of the anode will start to decrease as the copper atom turn into copper ion. And size of the cathode start to increase as the copper ion turn into copper atom. So here the anode size decrease, and what is the reason? Because the copper atoms changes to copper ion and enter the solution. And for cathode, what will happen? The cathode size will Increase. What is the reason for that? Because the copper ions deposited at cathode form a copper metal. So this was the first part from Feb March seventeen paper four variant.